Hi, I'm Alvira Boulet from the Dimitrov Boulet Piano Duo. Last week Dimitar vlogged a little bit of his practice and I thought this week I would do the same. I'm practicing at the moment something for the duo, um, the Rondo in A major by Schubert. And if you haven't heard this piece yet, it's very beautiful. And I'm sure Dimitar and I will be vlogging it in the future. Now I just practiced 15 minutes off camera and I thought I'll show you what I'm doing with my practice lately. I like to switch up my practice. I like to always search for different things to do. And I think that as soon as your practice becomes too much of a routine and you're kind of not thinking, you're not so concentrated anymore, it's time to do something different. This week, what I'm doing is I'm taking a large section and every time I'm playing it through several times, three, four, five times the large section. And every time I'm focused on something different. So that can be rhythm, that can be phrasing. Every time I'm trying to focus on something different. So that doesn't mean that I would ignore everything else, but it does mean that my main attention is going to the thing that I decided. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, the first time, by the way, in the 15 minutes off camera, what I did is I did the rhythms. And if you don't know what the rhythms are, watch this video up here in the corner, because that the rhythms are a great technical exercise to do if you have some challenging passages. What is challenging about this piece is that there are continuous 16th notes always flowing. And what is the challenge is to make them nice and even. So I'll show you a little bit of the my part, the left part. The Dimitar is playing mainly the melody and my my accompaniment is mainly this flowing 16th notes and they're supposed to be really really soft and gentle and beautiful. So that's the goal I'm working for. <laughs> So the challenge is, I think there's a lot of challenges in this piece, but I would say one of the main challenges is to get those 16th notes nice and smooth. So I'm going to choose a large section and play it through and focus on one thing at a time. And while I was playing, while I was playing, I noticed that actually I think my bass is lacking character. I don't think it's clear every single time how I'm phrasing the bass. I don't think I have it really clearly in my head. I think the 16th notes, I know more clearly what I want to do. I think the bass feels kind of lost. It feels kind of soft and it feels kind of without any character. So I'm going to play this section through. I'm going to focus mainly on the bass. And I might, what I sometimes do is I might exaggerate a little bit. So I might play the bass. I'm going, planning to play it a little bit louder. Not as loud as I would want to eventually, but I would play it louder just to focus on it a little bit, just to kind of experiment with it a little bit. Sometimes if you're focused on playing something really soft, you just go into softer, 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 and it doesn't have any character. So I'm going to play through my section, focus on the bass, try to play the bass a bit louder than I would usually to see if I can get more clear into my head what to do with the bass. <laughs> but I am taking more time than I usually would. So I think that's something that's important, especially if you focus musically on something, try to not be obsessed with playing rhythmically. You can play it a whole time through after this with a metronome, really try to get that rhythm straight. But I think, especially when you work musically, I never try to work in rhythm because I think you need some time to think, you need some time to listen, you need some time to follow. Uh, so, so make sure that when you are playing through focused on musicality, focused on phrasing, you kind of leave rhythm a bit aside. Um, so what I noticed is that I need to get more clear for myself where the phrase, long phrase ends and where it begins. 
Uh, and and the, the tricky thing with playing quatre mains, this was a solo piece, would be a bit easier. The tricky thing with playing uh, four hands is that I have to actually check what Dimitar is doing in order to also better understand how I need to phrase. So I'm just going to play that through real quick, his part. So in the first phrase, I would say that he is phrasing towards uh, the E. I'm going to keep an eye out for what he actually does because Dimitar often surprise me, uh, surprises me with his uh, uh, very creative phrasings, which is wonderful, it's very inspirational. Um, but as I'm going to keep an eye out when we rehearse so that if he does phrase differently, that I also adjust my own phrasing towards that. But for now I'm going to assume he is phrasing towards these two notes, so I'm going to also check to see if my bass needs to change. For example, I have a bass note exactly in the note where he's probably phrasing towards. So that means that I need to play that a bit louder. And I kind of had the tendency before that to play it a bit bland. So I think that I need to do it a bit louder and I can, you know, do it a little bit exaggerated so that I can get the hang of it. We can always take back. So I'm gonna do it a bit exaggerated now. too much but this helps me get the hang of the phrasing so I'm gonna do it again because this is not how I'm going to play them, I hope that's clear. But I'm working on them to, to do them a little bit too much so I can get the hang of doing at least something, because before that, I play them almost even, and that's just going to make your piece sound boring, sound bland, and especially when you're in the accompaniment, you really need to give the piece energy. You know, that's your job as sitting here. You're not the melody, but you're the thing, you're the drive that keeps the piece going. So. I'm going to go through the whole section like this, really focusing on that left hand, doing it exaggerated, exaggerating it, because I can always after that take it back. I think it's the first step that you work on what you want, because in a lot of places I didn't even know how to phrase, which is not so good. Um, so I'm going to go through, and that's honestly a long process because I have to check also everywhere what Dimitar is doing, or probably doing. And um, I'm going to go through it phrase by phrase. Okay, and I'm going to go through this off camera because I don't want to bore you. But I do think that I have a really great exercise for you. I think that once you should play whatever piece you're playing at the moment, I think you should play it once through as if your left hand was the melody. So just an exercise, you know? Just an exercise to get kind of out your usual rhythm, to do something completely different. So what would the piece sound like if the left hand was the melody? It, it's an exercise to get more conscious on what this left hand is doing and not just play it flat and boring. Okay, so that is my first time going through it. I'll do that off camera. And the second time I am going to focus on rhythm because that is something I really generally need to work on. I'm gonna take the metronome and I'm going to play it through once with a metronome. And I want you to be conscious of when you're practicing with the metronome that you should also switch that up. Don't always put it on the quarter notes. Maybe try once to have two beats in the bar, you know, every half note. Uh, this trains different things. If you put the metronome less, you'll have, the metronome will help you more with like having a forward drive. It won't help you play everything perfectly rhythm, rhythmically but it will help you have a forward drive. And that is what I'm going to work on this time. So then I'll write that down. And then the next time I perhaps put the metronome a little bit more often and work a little bit more precisely rhythmically. And I think I'm even going to make it a little bit more difficult for myself, a little bit more challenging. I think I'm going to put the metronome only once per bar. I would definitely say try it once out for yourself. And that really gives you, not so much helps you rhythmically, but it really helps you get that drive, that forward drive that you want in this piece. I'm gonna put it, it's going to be really slow because I'm gonna get only the first beat.
So with this, if, if you put the metronome so rare, it's a really great training, but it might be a little bit difficult to get started, especially since this piece starts at an upbeat. So if you find that too tricky, just start on the first beat of the bar. Uh, yeah, so, so remember, you can play your piece through once focusing, or your large section through once focusing on rhythm. And then you could hear that actually my left hand now <laughs> was pretty much forgotten. I definitely didn't have the space in my hand to focus on the phrasing, but that's all right. That's why I already practiced that once. And the more you practice, and the more you focus on one thing like that during your practice, if you do that often enough, you'll be able to combine all these different things. Because of course that in the end is your goal. You want to play rhythmically, you want to play with a forward drive, you want to play um, beautifully phrased with your left hand. So I would say that's what I'm lately doing in my practice. Play your whole piece depending on how short or long it is. This is a long piece so I'm choosing a big section. Choose your section and choose one thing specifically to focus on that makes you also just much more focused on what you're doing. And I don't mean forget, uh, if you're making a wrong note, forget about it. No, of course, fix the basic things, but try to put all your attention into that one thing. So if you want to incorporate this in your own practice, then I will tell you a few things that you can focus on. Um, for example, you can focus on phrasing the left hand. This is your left hand is very often forgotten. So you could play it once through really paying extra attention to your left hand and not worrying too much if your right hand at that moment is not completely perfectly phrased. You can play it once through focusing on rhythm. And don't forget that you can focus on different aspects of rhythm. You can put the metronome more rare if you want to focus on a forward drive. You can put the metronome to beat more often if you want to focus on playing more precise everything rhythmically. You can focus once, you can play once through your piece, focusing very much on uh, dynamics, making sure you do all the dynamics that are written. You can play your piece through once and focus very much on balancing your right and your left hand, making sure that all the voices are balanced out. All the voices that you're playing have a different dynamic, have a different volume. If you want to uh, learn more about balancing, by the way, I'll pop the link up to that video in, right here in the corner. Um, what else? Uh, you can focus, you can play once your piece through technically. And uh, for example, what I mentioned in the beginning that I did off camera is I did some technical work on it. I played the piece through in a different rhythm. I uh, hope that that was useful to you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe and like, that helps us out enormously. So if you want to help us grow the channel, that would be very much appreciated. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.